How to pick the right pantheon in Civilization VI Gathering Storm. I put together a pantheon guide that shows my thinking process that I hope will be valuable to you. I combined each pantheon belief into a priority tier. It does not mean that the pantheon is good or bad, but rather an order I would pick it in, given normal starting conditions. The selection flows group to group, in ascending number order. You can download the graphic along with other resources on my website, comradekane.com. But first, what is a Pantheon and how to get it fast? If you are an experienced player, then skip to the Pantheon selection section. A Pantheon is an early religious belief that provides a bonus based on various factors, but most are map related like the terrain and resources. In Civilization VI Gathering Storm you would need to earn 25 faith on standard speed to unlock a pantheon. A pantheon is, a, is founded automatically by each player as long as the faith requirement is met. Naturally a player who saves 25 faith first will have the dibs on the best pantheon and the second one, and the third, and so on. So to get a good quality Pantheon, you'd need to get it before other players. Every game is different, but in my experience, the turn range for selecting the Pantheon can range from 16 to 50. So how do you get 25 faith faster? Here's the list of the early faith sources. The most common source is God King government policy, which is unlocked with the Code of Laws Civic, which costs 20 culture and provides plus one faith per turn. It means that earning early culture will help unlock this policy faster, like meeting the culture city-state first or playing as Trajan and starting with a free monument that provides plus two culture right away. But plus one faith is not great. The second source is unlocking the tribal village, and it could provide faith in two ways. As a one-time 20 faith bonus, or as a relic, which generates plus 4 faith per turn. This is by far the strongest start for any victory, because you can reach a pantheon much quicker, but also generate tourism right away, or trade the relic for an insane amount of early gold to the AI. Next source is a religious city-state. It provides plus one faith per turn with one envoy. If you meet the city-state first, then you earn one envoy right away automatically. Exploration is important, as always. Then there are tiles that provide faith. Tiles with luxury resources like dyes, incense, pearls, and tobacco. Try to settle a city right on one of these resources to get access to faith right away, except pearls. And then tiles with natural wonders, so Crater Lake, Dead Sea, and the rest of them provide faith as well. And the last but not least is a leader who starts with faith as part of their trait or save ability like Russia, which gets plus one on Tundra, or Indonesia, that gets plus two faith for city center on the coast, or Mali, that gets plus one faith city center in the desert. So what is the strongest pantheon? The decision to pick the best pantheon is situational like so many other things in the game. Here are my thoughts. The first up, religious settlements. It's a pantheon that is strong and straightforward choice, especially if there is a solid second city location with access to more lucrative tiles and luxury resources. The more cities you have early, the more yields you can earn. AI does prioritize this pantheon, so your best chance to grab it comes between turn 10 to 16, which is not easy. Rome's leader Trajan has a decent synergy with this pantheon because of free monuments, meaning high early culture. Honorable mention of other city center sieves like Mali 
or Indonesia. A weaker synergy for this pantheon is, is Governor Reina, whose default promotion helps city borders expand 20% or so faster. After that, the first question I would ask is, are you playing as a leader of any early domination sit? If so, are your neighbors close enough for an early conquest rush? If the answer is yes, then consider God of the Forge Pantheon to produce units 25% faster. Coupled with the Agoge policy card, the range and melee unit production bonus adds up to 75%. Additionally, consider sieves with cheaper production cost units or Nubia that has its own 30% production boost towards the ranged units. If you're not going for early domination, then are you planning on a religious or culture victory game? Then you can consider Monument to the Gods. It provides 15% boost to ancient and classical wonder production. There are 19 wonders between those two eras, and some of them can define your game. Carve Policy adds another 15% boost and Autocracy Government an additional 10 for a total of 40% wonder production boost. Additionally, you can get beautiful synergy playing as King of China with 15% builder charges or Cleopatra of Egypt with 15% wonders built next to a river. Suzerainty of Brussels city-state will give you another 15% production bonus. All of those add up. And don't forget friends, that gets 100 tourism boost for all wonders built. So early wonders like Stonehenge and Mahabudi Temple can give you an edge in a religious game, whereas other wonders like Oracle and Apadana will prove useful for a culture push. On to so-called adjacency pantheons. Each requires a holy site district and is recommended to be coupled with work, ethic, belief, and scripture policy to result in high faith and high production output. Dance of Aurora is the strongest choice of the three, provided you can build at least three, four holy sites in good cities. Tundra allows woods to be planted as well, increasing faith adjacency of the holy sites even further. Add St. Basil's Cathedral Wonder to your Tundra city and enjoy the giant yields. Pick Russia or try Canada for the best synergy. Desert Folklore is the second strongest adjacency pantheon, similar to Aurora, but with no woods to increase adjacency bonus. Add Petra Wonder on Aska Line's improvement to boost the yields. Pick Mali as the strongest synergy sieve with Egypt or Nubia as runner-ups. Lastly, Sacred Path drops to tier 2 for two reasons. Rainforests are not as abundant as Tundra Desert terrain, making Holy Site placement limited. And rainforests often have to be chopped in favor of districts or production boost, reducing the adjacency bonus. Build Chichen Itza to boost the rainforest yields and pick Brazil for the highest synergy level. Consider Nzingo of Congo and Batryu of Vietnam as runner-ups. Now, one of the best pantheons outside of tier 1 choice is Goddess of Festivals because of its culture synergy from the plantation resources. Culture is paramount to any victory type especially on the early stages where you need to get to that first government, governor title, government policies and envoys. So it is universally beneficial. All plantation resources but bananas are luxuries, meaning they should be prioritized for improvement and cannot be harvested. So the culture yield stays for the rest of the game. I would look for at least five plantations in the immediate settling area to make this pantheon worthwhile. Grand Colombia and Maya should have direct synergy with this pantheon 
due to the starting bias and some traits. God of the Sky Pantheon is similar to the goddess of festivals in the way of culture, however pastures, like the sheep and cattle, can be harvested in favor of food to rush city growth. Australia and Scythia should have direct synergy due to the starting bias. Look for at least 5 pastures in the immediate settling area. River Goddess is arguably one of the strongest pantheons, as long as you can build several holy site districts. It allows your cities to grow faster, therefore provide more yield. It works best with Khmer civilization that benefits from large population cities. Consider other civs biased to spawning on the rivers like Hungary and Babylon. Divine Spark is very versatile and universal. It is super early source for great people points and an easy strong choice for a culture science or religious victory game, even for a novice player. Paired with Oracle Wonder, Pingala's grants promotion and classical republic government, it provides a powerful combination. Pick Brazil or Russia to augment great people points production even further. This concludes my priority groups 1 and 2. I will say that fertility rights pantheon with a free builder might cause a stir because I put it at the bottom of tier 4. Because the 10% growth rate is applied to excess food only. So the opportunity cost for picking this pantheon is just too high in favor of other pantheons that provide more reliable yields. So this is quite a bit of information to process, so look for the second episode to catch up on the rest of the Pantheon beliefs. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and I hope for the feedback in the comments. Thanks again for your support and I'll see you next time. One more turn.